Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the preventive obstetrics. In this, first, anti, first maternal and child health. In the maternal and child health, we have important thing that is antenatal and postnatal visits. Antenatal and postnatal visits include re reproductive and child health program. According to reproductive and child health program, uh, ideal antenatal visits should be around 13 to 14th. From uh, this is divided in different months. From so in ideal antenatal visits 13 to 14th, we have from 0 to 7 months, the antenatal visit should be once every month. In 8th month, it should be twice every month or once fortnightly. In the ninth month, it should be once a week. So that is ideal antenatal visits. But sometimes some people are not capable of undergoing ideal antenatal visits. In them, we do minimum antenatal visits, which should be 3. First antenatal visit in first trimester, second antenatal visit in second trimester and third antenatal visit in third trimester. So, and what about the minimum antenatal visits? If one per trimester is not possible, then also there should be three antenatal visits. First antenatal visit should be at around 20 weeks of period of gestation. Second antenatal visit should be 32 weeks of period of gestation. And third antenatal visit should be at 36 weeks period of gestation, which is important. Then we have minimum postnatal visit. Minimum postnatal visits should be around 3. The first postnatal visit should be at less than 3 days. Second postnatal visit should be at around 1 week. And third postnatal visit should be at around 8 weeks. So these are the minimal postnatal visits. Then if you see at risk approach. At risk approach is done to identify high risk cases. In uh, maternal and child health program, one main important thing is to make sure that all the mothers and children, all the mothers and babies are completely fine. They get the highest and proper amount of care. So we will have to give extra care to those who are at high risk. So uh, this at risk approach is mainly to give appropriate care to all mothers and specialized care should be given to high risk cases. In high risk cases, we should give specialized care. So at risk approach is present for at risk infants and there are also at risk mothers. At risk infants include those with birth weight less than 2.5 kg that is low birth weight, twins, birth order more than 5, artificial feeding because with artificial feeding they are more prone to infections so they are at risk infants, weight less than 70% of expected because they are under malnutrition especially second or third grades of malnutrition under include at risk infants failure to thrive due to what is failure to thrive failure to thrive is failure to gain weight in three successive months this also is an at risk infants child with uh, protein energy malnutrition and diarrhea working mother and single parent also comes under at risk infants then we have at risk mothers at risk mothers are those with problems during the antenatal period. So at risk mothers are those with elderly primary that is more than 30 years of age, short stature less than 140 centimeters uh, height because there is more prone to uh, um, cesarean, se cesarean section in uh, short stature primary, mal presentations like breach and transfer slide because they cause complicated labor then uh, sometimes antipartum hemorrhage uh, or threatened abortions like previous history of threatened abortion uh, previous history of abortions also anemia because of decreased nutrient supply to the baby preeclampsia and eclampsia twins hydromnios previous stillbirths uh, then it can be intrauterine deaths or sometimes if we have to do a manual removal of placenta 
then elderly gravi grand palti para that is more than five or, or equal to five births prolonged pregnancy that is more than 14 days after uh, expected date of delivery and also if the mother has some associated systemic disease like diabetes mellitus or uh, uh, tuberculosis if there is history of previous cesarean section or instrumental delivery so all these come under at risk approach at risk infants and at risk mother so these are at risk infants and at risk mother then we will have to learn about the danger signals during labor danger signals during labor are uh, include if the if, if the if the patient if the patient has any of these danger signals then he or she, sorry she should be uh, immediately referred to the higher center for professional help so uh, for specialist help so the danger signals include sluggish or no or half pains after rupture of membranes no progress of labor after rupture of membranes because in these cases we should at least do induction of labor prolapse of hand or cord uh, because um, immediate uh, cesarean section might be required in these cases meconium stained liquor or slow irregular or fast fetal heart sound this um, indicates respiratory distress in newborn so bag and mask ventilation or further intubation might be necessary in those babies sometimes excessive show or bleeding during labor bleeding during labor may predispose the mother to shock so we should uh, it is a danger signal collapse during labor it can be due to any type of shock placenta is not separated within half an hour after delivery this will uh, uh, indicate that there can be morbidly adherent placenta like placenta accreta increta or percreta postpartum hemorrhage or collapse and temperature more than 38 degrees celsius so all these are danger signals during labor so these are the important things about the maternal uh, thing and at risk infants thank you for watching my lecture thank you